Shopify does not allow blog articles to be imported directly via other tools or CSV files. However, I can show you a fast and easy way to do this that will not only drive traffic to your e-commerce store, but it will also limit the risk of your content getting de-indexed by Google. Getting de-indexed by Google in 2023 is a real problem that you want to avoid. With this process, there is no code, there's no chat GPT, there's no Zapier or automations. This is a really powerful SEO strategy for Shopify that no one is doing and it's really easy. Let's get started. Okay, so I've just set up a, a demo Shopify store here and it's going to sell art and craft products. So to drive traffic to this store, we want some articles, blog content around art and craft. A good place to start to get some ideas on terms, phrases, and get an idea of the volume is SEMrush. I'm just using the free account of SEMrush here. I'm using the keyword overview. I've entered in the search term kids art and craft. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see the keyword variations, related keywords. We can see there is quite a lot of volume for, for this type of search term and phrase. The keyword difficulty is varying from sort of something that's achievable to, to quite high. But the strategy we're going to adopt is going to target the entire cross section from easy to rank for search terms up to the more difficult. Now that we have an idea that there is good volume for this for this niche, the next thing is we, we want to get a list of potential article titles. So to get our article titles, we're going to use Mango SEO and specifically within Mango, we're going to use Beethoven. So within Beethoven, there is two steps to it. The first step, we're going to enter in our what's called the head term, and then we're going to use the system to generate the modifier. And what I mean by that is it's going to generate in this case, I've selected to generate uh, 75 titles uh, in English. You can do this in uh, multiple different languages, but We'll stick to English for this one, and then we'll get an entire list of titles that we can use to generate content for. I'll just hit generate titles. Okay, so that's done. Now we can see we've got our 75 titles here and we've got the head term, which is included in every title. And then we have the modifier that's added to the start or the end or both to create a, a title for our content. The basic process from here is if we select one of these titles, so paper-based art and craft for kids, for example, we just copy that and we're gonna paste it over here. Now we're gonna generate the blog content that is perfect for our store really quick. Okay, so the Beethoven step two process has generated the content now, and this is probably around a thousand words. And what we're going to do, and this, this is where the sort of the magic happens. If you've ever created a, a blog article in Shopify, you can know it can be quite fiddly with the formatting and the HTML. So with this process, there is no formatting. There's nothing left to do. All you need to do is click the button here and it is gonna generate the HTML. So then we just click copy. So jumping back over to our Shopify store, we're just gonna create a new blog post. You can see I've already got one here. And once you get to the the blog input, don't paste it straight in here. What you want to do is click on the show HTML and then all you need to do, paste the HTML. There you go. There is your formatted article. Of course, you want to add a featured image and we also want to do some links between the article and the products. All right, so we want to get a, a featured image for our content and we want to be able to generate heaps of these images so we can use them on multiple articles. I typically go to Canva it's free. I've selected a bunch of images here and I'm going to use this one for the for the featured image, image on the article we just did. So I've just loaded that up here. I've also added our title in and also made sure it has an author. Now, these steps are really important because we want to send all the right signals to Google so this article does not get de-indexed. And the next step in doing this is to make sure we have some internal links. And probably the, the best way of doing this in a Shopify store, you're going to have products that you're selling that are related to your blog articles. So we just want to link in the appropriate place back to those products. So for example, if I was selling some colored paper on the art and craft store, just here, I would add a link. 
Now I've actually got a product over here, it's actually paint, but we'll use it just for the example. So I'll just grab the URL, come back here, put the URL in, insert the link. So this link here now is linking across to a product on the page. So every one of your blog articles, you're going to have a couple of links, either back to the home page or to a product, which is also going to help de-risk getting de-indexed. The next step, and this is really important and it shouldn't be overlooked, and I see a lot of stores that completely miss this. If you scroll down to the bottom of the blog article, you are going to see this section here, and it is the SEO uh, editing section. So we just want to click on edit the website SEO. Now you can see here we've got a page title and we've got a description. And these both have constraints in order to conform to best practice. Now for some reason Shopify always allows a whole bunch of content in here, but Google will cut it off. So what we want to do is get a really good page title. The way we're going to do that, we're going to actually go back to Beethoven and we're going to copy our title. And if we go to the menu here, we can go to this SEO meta section. I'm just going to paste our title in, our article title in here, and it's going to come up with a, a range of meta titles and meta descriptions we can choose from. Okay, so we've got our titles and descriptions. You can see here the numbers at the end. These are the, the lengths of them. So you want it to sort of be around that 50 to 60. So I'm just going to select this one here, and we're going to update this page title, and we're going to just remove the character length and now we want to grab the description you just select one that you think is pretty good with our title and description done that's the SEO part of this now we're just going to press save on this one and we're going to view this article live here's our article everything's looking pretty good you might want to just test your links are working so by clicking on this one you can see it goes to the product the next thing I would recommend you do is if you haven't already got it Download the detailed SEO extension. It is totally free and it works on Chrome. And what this will allow you to do is once you're on the page and the, the blog content you've just created, you click on the extension and it's going to give you a quick snapshot of the state of your SEO. So we can see we've got the green tick for the title, the description is looking good, the URL, and everything else is looking pretty good. And this is something that if you go to any of your websites, product pages, and just click this, you're going to find out pretty quick whether you're conforming to Google best practice. The next step is we want to make sure that we submit our page to Google for indexing. Over time, Google will index your page regardless of whether you do this. But if you want to force the indexing of the page, what you need to do is go into Google Search Console. If you don't have a Google Search Console account, just basically Google, Google Search Console, click the link and it'll log you in. You add the domain, which is all very straightforward. Now, when you're in there, what you want to do is click on this one over here, URL inspection, and it's going to ask you to put the URL in for the page. So enter it in and request indexing. Pretty straightforward. Now, the other reason I've brought you to this page is to show you that Google will de-index your pages if they're not done correctly. So on one of my sites, you can see early on what happened here is all the pages and all the content that was going in was being indexed and we're up to 46 index pages. And then all of a sudden Google starts de-indexing the content. And the reason for this is it was basically the basics weren't done. We didn't have the proper SEO titles. We didn't have the meta description, the site, has little to no authority because it's brand new. Google basically de-indexed it. Now, to avoid that, follow the steps I've provided. Make sure you add your titles, your description, have an author. If your site is very new, I wouldn't recommend dumping a whole heap of content at once. I would drip feed it in, maybe an article or two a day. And when you're in Shopify, if you've got the ability here is when you create the post, you can leave it as hidden so you can add them all in. So if you generate 75 titles and you set up 75 blog posts, just make them visible, a couple visible every day, but don't do the whole lot at once. Follow these steps and you should be good to go. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. If you'd like to know more about Mango or programmatic SEO, check out the video here and I'll catch you in the next one.